because I don't have, I teach exercise classes on Tuesday and Thursday mornings. I'm like, oh, it's Friday. I get to go back to bed. And then I was like, oh, <laughs> I forgot. Okay, so let me tell you what my dream is for HR. I'm not gonna mess with the bottom of it. I just use my regular white paint, nothing fancy. You know, I don't buy any of the fancy stuff to paint on glass or anything. Just my base flat white paint. And you know what? It's not even paint from those little bottles. I buy a gallon of white paint. It's like, I don't need all those bottles. In fact, I never used to use all the bottles, but now I'm surrounded by them. But back in the day when I first started painting, I was an oops Walmart girl. Walmart, the local hardware store, all I needed to paint was a pink and a red. You know, I could mix whatever colors I needed. So when you paint, I always tell people inside of my painting group, sometimes I won't even give them the name on a bottle. It's like, don't, don't. Don't not paint because you don't have a leaf green. Don't not paint when you, because so I hate saying names because it's like I feel like I would hold some of you up if I do a project and I start throwing names at you like Tawny Medium. I don't want you to have to run to Hobby Lobby and look for Tawny Medium when any tan would work. So I always try to push that on everybody who paints or, you know, even if you're just painting for yourself at home, you know, people love to get rid of the gallons of paint that they use on their house. <laughs> they love it when they know that you want to paint and they know that uh, you love pretty colors. Believe me, you will have more paint than you can deal with. And your husband will say, do something, make a post, I don't care what you do. I want no more of people's paint on my porch because, you know, nobody can get rid of it. So it was like when they knew I could use it, I was getting gallons of paint. Most of them I would have never used either. But, you know, people try to be helpful and they try to get rid of stuff that they don't. You can't get rid of paint. When you get it in a gallon, you have nothing to do with it. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I should refresh myself over here and say good morning to everyone. Uh, I just got right into it. So bless all of you that get up so early. Actually, it's not bad. Um, let's see if I can find you, though. So my rendition of a jar... Used to, all right, how many of you back in the day, so if you were a painter or a crafter, you just painted it all one solid color, then you painted it with an apple or a gingerbread or red, white, and blue, because those were my main colors back then, or the main things that I did. And then you took one of those glass votives, you put it down in there, then you put a votive candle in there, and you tied a nice pretty bow on there. Hello, Jennifer. I mean, I, I made hundreds and thousands of dollars probably off putting votive cups and candles. And you know, everything's coming back around. So let's see. You might as well try to make money off jars. It's simple. So, but I'm going to get more creative today than I usually am. Hi, Chris. Um, so when I did an event last week, I took a plastic egg from Dollar Tree and look, I made my own sugar egg. Look at that. Isn't that so cute? I'm, I'm loving Highland cows. Look at that Highland cow in there. Can you see her? <laughs> it's just absolutely adorable. I love it. <laughs> um, so that's kind of what I want to do. And if you look at it up close, look at that. You can see the sparkle. It looks like a sugar egg. When, when you were younger, if you had a sugar egg, don't tell me you didn't look on it and set it, or set it down. And then you're 
brother or sister came along and they licked on it and we were like a bunch of little calves constantly picking up this sugar egg and licking it. Do you know how horrible that sounds right now? <laughs> I was talking to Chris the, from the other day and she said, my mom still has my, my sugar egg from middle school. Guys, 40 years ago and she still has her sugar egg. Now don't tell me that thing hasn't been licked off <laughs> a million times. I bet if her mother sets it out now, people would still lick on that egg. So this is my run edition of a sugar egg on a jar. So we've got the opening. I uh, face coated it and um, painted it with any pink, any pink. Don't, don't have to be fancy here. And um, caulking. Caulking is going to be what I use around it. And I better quit talking and get to doing it, huh? So, I'm just going to take my jar now. Because if you base coat it white first, then your your paint won't, you won't be able to dig your finger and scratch your paint. It won't happen. After you seal it, you're good. You don't have to have all those fancy steps, all that fancy, um, whatever they call it. Just some white paint. You're good. I'm going to bend you down just a little bit so you can see better. And I'm going to see. All right. And then I'm just, well, we'll, we'll decorate it here in a minute. Then I'm just going to stick one of these rabbits down in here. I don't have any green grass, which is what I would have used. So we're going to make it more natural. See him sitting in there? And he's so darn cute. All right, first off, we're going to sugar our egg. So let's grab a piece of tin foil. And, Whoa, look at all you people who are up so early in the morning. I hope you all have a great day if you're heading out to work. Or... I admire you people who can get up so early. I admire you. I'm a, I'm a late night person. I think um, I work best at night. In fact, I was up till 1 o'clock this morning working. It's my favorite time to work. Oh, I got comments over here. Let's see. Hi, Lori. Thank you, Jackie. All right, so all I'm going to do now is we hope that our pink's dry. Let's just put on some Mod Podge. So that's what I was thinking last night when I went to bed. I, um, or actually, I was thinking of this yesterday afternoon when everyone was giving me comments and messages on what I could do with a jar. I'm like, I could go back to the early 2000s and just paint a cute apple and stick an apple up on top of the lid. Okay. So we're going to want to do this all the way around. like a sugar egg. The problem with this, guys, maybe our grandkids don't know what the heck a sugar egg is. I went and bought some meringue powder because I did look it up on Pinterest to see how to make a sugar egg. And basically all you do is mix sugar and meringue powder and water. You put it in your form. So like you would, you would pack it in there and then you hollow it out. And then you make an opening and fill it. Then you cement it together with your royal icing. I don't know how to make royal icing, but I can always look around the caulking. Oh, goodness. I did, Tammy. I painted and diamond dusted. 
I did, but look how, how cute that is. See, now you just make a diorama. I, the the um, rabbit that I picked out for today, unfortunately, I didn't measure it to make sure it would fit down in there. All right, let's find this glue gun here. Oh, here it is. And of course, it's not plugged in, so hopefully we'll get there. But this would be a cute little project. You know, you wouldn't want your grandkids getting their hands in the um, diamond dust, but just to sit around and then we'll put the lid back on and decorate the lid. So this is just caulking that um, I went out to the lumber yard to get it because someone said to make sure that you, when you got it, that you used um, paintable caulking. So I don't need to paint mine because mine's just going to be white. So let's see if we can, let's see if it's not all dried up. That could be the first thing, huh? I could have tested this yesterday. It's not, but let me cut off some more of that tip. See if we can get it to flow. Hi, Mara. Um, good morning from Tennessee, Teresa. Ah, uh, Tanya. I love watching Tanya paint. This is kind of hard getting this stuff out. In fact, I'm going to give it a little bit more of that dried up stuff down there. I really thought that I was done with the caulking once I did last week's project. I didn't think I would need it again. And luckily it was still in the garbage can. And so you actually kind of got it too big, but it's fine. And then you just, if you ever decorated a cake, pretty much simple, the same, same concept. Except on a jar, it wants to roll on you. You really need both hands to I never claimed to be a cake decorator, so it's okay. But isn't that going to be cute? It's going, all, all it's made me want to do is make a sugar egg and lick the darn thing. That's all I want to do right now. I just, in fact, I'm going to do that this weekend over on my channel. I'm going to make a real sugar egg. Because I got all the stuff, I just... I don't know if I'll use the royal icing, but I could use caulking. And then what they did was, I wish I would have had um, a piece of acrylic I would have put in there because when you make the sugar egg, you're supposed to put um, cellophane over the opening so that it looks like you're looking into the egg and then you see um they don't sell it anymore you know the hard really hard candies that you used to put on your birthday cake and everybody always you know you know your brothers and sisters everybody fought over the h-a-p-p-y that your mom put on your birthday cake yeah anyway you put that in the egg because they used to make them with easter scenes and things like that Look at him in there. Cute. I'm pretty excited. It's 7.30 in the morning over a jar and some diamond dust. <laughs> Hi, Pam. Good morning, Mary. Don't lick the jar, Paula. It looks so tempting to, to lick that jar, doesn't it? Because that's all I talk about anymore is licking a sugar egg. And so I've got to make one. 
Only now I don't know what I did with my jar wood. And you saw how fast that worked up. Uh-oh. This could be the next highlight of my day. Oh, I found it. Okay, so you could decorate the inside of your um, egg with, you know, with jelly beans. Because somebody's, oh, I might not say nobody, having a sugar attack, you might get in there and get your jelly beans. But you can get these little eggs at um, Dollar Tree. I'm not going to make mine pink since I've got that natural bunny in there. I'm just going to put some little flowers in mine. Kind of make it more springy. But definitely, if I had the right equipment, I would have made it for that. Let me see it in here. But if you went to a craft show, do you know how many of these you could sell? They would sell really well. I can't believe I didn't think of this when I did craft shows years ago. Then you could have charged, you know, $24 for a jar. Save your old mayonnaise jars. And then you're painting for a profit. Always remember, when you're painting, when you're doing anything, don't do it without the purpose of making a profit in there because we don't do this. Well, we do do it for fun, but you always want, want to keep in mind how it can make you money. All right. So once it's dry, I will go in and hot glue the heck out of that thing so that it doesn't run. But it would be so much cuter with the little eggs and a little rabbit in it, make it pastel colors. I'm gonna drop that egg in there anyway. Or a bird. You know, Tanya made the cutest birds with air clay the other day. You could make a little nest in there and put little robin eggs. Those would look really cute. Um. <laughs> Everybody go find a jar and make sugar eggs. Wouldn't they be so pretty up on a shelf and you had all different pastel colors? And you had something in each. If you had, you know, go to the Dollar Tree, get those little chicks. Um, oh, when they look cute as little fairy gardens because they got those little gnomes in there. I mean, you could do so many different. I'm kind of excited. I don't, I do get lots of original ideas, but this one was one of the best I've had. All right, so let's put this up here. Try not to get our hands. I am going to, I got a couple minutes. I'm going to run some pink around the edge. I'm not worried about the top. So I'm on this sugar egg kick now. So you want to see what I'm going to create tonight? I think, you know, everybody's going and getting these bunnies. Well, I'm not a floral person and or bows or whatever, but I'm going to take my bunny and I'm going to make him into a sugar egg bunny. Look at that. I, I started digging into his stomach last night to figure out that I can get, I'm hoping to find a clear topped Easter egg. So I'm going to dig that out. Actually, I'm going to have my husband put it on the drill, drill it out, maybe roll some air clay out thin and kind of use that as my background but I would really like to get the top of an egg that's clear and then I set my 
decorations inside of his belly, put that clear egg on top of it, do my piping around it, and nobody else will have a sugar rabbit. I tell you, I'm getting overboard on the sugar stuff. All right, so we've got the lid. Let's just... Now, like I said, if you have, I don't know if I like the green grass either, but, oh, they make it in pink. I would rather have the paper shreds, I think, rather than the cellophane. And we might not get any hot glue out of here for a while. So while that's going on, let's put a ribbon around the jar lid. Might as well use the same scissors that we just dug into the caulking with because we just need caulking over everything. Um, oh, Jessica, that's a good idea to heat it up. I was going to put it on the drill press <laughs> see, and hope for the best. But, you know, you've seen that they're so popular. And I even bought three things of ribbon and I'm not a ribbon person and it's like I don't want to go down that ribbon rabbit hole where I start buying ribbon all over <laughs> so so I I just figured my sugar egg would would work and we'll see I'm not going to lie to you guys. You guys could make so many of these up in no time. <laughs> it's like I'm sitting here trying to go through a half hour. It's a good thing this isn't a 45-minute spot because it doesn't take that long. Something nice and quick. And if it wasn't for the diamond dust, it would be very kid-friendly. Oops. A bow. Aha, we tied a bow. Now this will make you feel so good to start your day nice and springy and just just a good look for a gray day. It's kind of gray here in Illinois and wet and cool you could but if you wanted to paint your caulking it's paintable caulking easy easy to paint so, we'll see I don't think the glue is going to come out oh, there it comes and so you could put any topper on here oh it wouldn't match, but I could, sh I'll show you an idea. So you could make these kind of primitive, you know, you could take your, um, like if you painted it white and then remember when I did the big jug and I added some texture to it and then I used my brown paint and cinnamon and grunged it all up. You could do the same thing here. And then that sisal uh, bunny, it would look so cute in there. So grunge up a jar. Don't make it like a sugar egg. Huh? That's a great, man, that's one of the best tips I can give you for the day because I know everybody likes grunging. Um, oh, oh, you getting snow? That is a great idea to try the Epsom salt. Okay, so this one doesn't match, but I pulled it out anyway. Look at that. Set them up there on top of your jar. Um, I am going to take, since I've got flowers up here, more of the pastel. Just take those little ribbons off. So, 
I mean, you could go around and, you know, go through your stash of all the things that you'll never use in your life, but you can decorate a jar with them. I'm kind of in that, in that mode today. I just want to start throwing and sorting again. I did it in January. So what the heck's the deal with organizing in January? Because you know what? I organized in January and somehow it's all back again. Somehow it's a mess. So apparently you can organize all you want. If you don't pick up after yourself, it's going to be a mess again. <laughs> Nobody told me that. I went to all that trouble getting it organized and setting it. Apparently you need to clean your paint table and your work area the same way you clean your house. Nobody told me that. It was like, oh, organize it, make it look pretty, and you're golden. No, it don't work like that, ladies. You got to clean it every day. So I guess that's what I get to do today. Oh, look at it. Isn't that just so cute? I wish I had more of the pastel rabbits in there. But, you know, you could actually you could put any kind of food in there. It's going to be uh, you could put your real peeps and oh, your real peeps and then put a peep on the top. Can you dry out peeps? Can you put them in a microwave and dry out a peep and then have your little peeps on top. I mean, for a jar, this was a great idea that Tracy had jar because yesterday I was like, what the heck am I going to do with a jar? I only know how to paint an apple or something on, on one, but, but really cute. Anybody got any questions? Cause I'm, I'm early for one time. Thank you, Jessica. Um, <laughs> Pam, thank you. Pam's an amazing artist, too. I do paint quite a bit, but uh, that's my main thing to do. But every once in a while, I get a good crafty idea. So I'm pretty excited because that was my own original design. Um, I do get crafty. So these are the guys that I'm selling now. Isn't he cute? So these are called porch tuckers and I make them in different designs and you see them also as Mr. Uncle Sam. So they're a lot of fun. So yes, you can follow me on my page, The Robin's Nest by Terry. I also have a selling group called Virtual Home Decor Marketplace where ladies come on to the marketplace and, and they sell. So. They, they don't just create, they have a place to come and sell because that's what we all want to do. We want to make and paint and all the things for a profit.